And welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. I am your host, James Just. With me tonight is author extraordinaire, Mr. John Cameron. Tonight, we are going to talk about Trump winning the election, pollsters getting the election wrong yet again, Calif uh, the status of the House and Senate of the Representatives, the Libertarian Party's performance in this year's election, the mayoral race, California's embarrassment in counting ballots, and if we get to it, we'll discuss the state of a few ballot propositions. But until then, we have Mr. Richard Fields has some stuff to say about this election, and so we're just going to go right to Mr. Richard Fields. Hi, this is Richard Fields with this week's Report from the Fields. I predicted over a year ago on this show that Joe Biden would not be the Democratic nominee for president this year due to his obvious mental decline. When he finally bowed out, I predicted that if the Democrats had an open convention to decide on their new nominee, they would win or could win in November. I also predicted that if Kamala Harris was anointed by the party elite, she would lose. And here we are. Just last week, I said that the vote was analogous to choosing between Mussolini and Lenin, and that I would vote for Chase Oliver, the libertarian nominee. Well, Mussolini won. The good news is that Lenin lost, and I really mean that is good news. Fascism, personified by Mussolini, obviously, and Trump, and communism, personified by, obviously, Lenin, and also, to a certain extent, Harris, are just two sides of the same authoritarian dictatorial coin. Yes, Trump has dictatorial tendencies. The legacy media has been relentlessly telling us that for the last decade. What the legacy media and social media has not been telling us is that the Democrats are, as personified by Biden and Harris, also have dictatorial tendencies. Look no further than the relentless censorship of social media for propagating anything other than the Democratic Party line under the banner of misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation. Among the many pieces of true, factual, and relevant information that were censored were the origin of the COVID virus in the Wuhan lab. It was that Anthony Fauci did not fund that lab. He did that the COVID death rate would be catastrophically high. It was no worse than the 68 flu. That the rushed to market vaccines would prevent COVID. They didn't. That they would have minimal side effects. They did. That Hunter, the Hunter Biden laptop was a Russian hoax. It wasn't. That Joe Biden was fit as a fiddle. He wasn't and isn't that the U.S. was not responsible for blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline. It probably was, and I'm just skimming the surface. Generally speaking, the people who try to gain power either through fascism or communism are not much interested in the ideology. They are interested in gaining power. The ideology is a means. Donald Trump is an empty vessel regarding ideology. He successfully won two elections by catering to people's fear of immigrants and trade competition from Mexico and China. Kamala Harris is likewise an empty vessel in ideology, but one of her early childhood influences was probably her father, who was an avowed Marxist economist. Her nod to price controls on groceries and subsidies to home buyers have roots in Marxist ideology. Whereas fascists appeal to fear, communists appeal to envy. They also appeal to the goodwill of people to help their neighbors, hence the slogan, from each according to their ability and to each according to their need. That aphorism works fine at the family level. Infants are mostly needy and parents are mostly able. It also works at the tribal level where everyone knows everyone else. The threat of being expelled from the tribe keeps slackers working at least a little bit. But once the person-to-person -person bonds of knowing everyone are stretched too far, slackers quickly figure out that working is optional because the government will take care of them anyway. That is what ultimately leads to the downfall of socialism. But it takes a long time. Witness the Soviet Union and communist China. 
It's important to note that both fascist and communist dictators kill a lot of their citizens. Six million were killed by Hitler in Nazi Germany. Conservative estimates put the death toll in the Soviet Union and communist China at about 55 million. Since there is little motivating ideology behind fascism besides fear of the other, fascist leaders tend to lose power relatively quickly. Since altruistic ideology is intrinsic to communism, communist leaders tend to hold on to power longer before losing it. Dictatorial governments are bad, since fascist dictators have historically had shorter rulerships than communist dictators. The only comfort I can take in the Trump win is that he leans fascist while Harris leans communist. In full disclosure, I voted for Chase Oliver, the Libertarian candidate. That was not because of any encouragement from the Libertarian Party of California, which included Jill Stein, Cornell West, and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as presidential candidates on its website, but not the Libertarian nominee, Chase Oliver. That's this week's report from the fields. I'm Rich F Richard Fields. See you again next week. Yeah, that's crazy. We'll talk about that. Huh. All right. Thank you, Richard. You know, Richard always has a unique perspective and one we should uh, listen to. If You know, you don't have to agree with it, but you hmm. should consider it. I, I think he has enough, enough experience, enough knowledge. That well, he's, he's old enough to have a lot of, a lot of experience. Yeah, so he's been, he's been around the block. I just saw him last week in Southern California. Yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yeah. 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 So how'd that go? Uh, very well. Yeah. Very well. He's got two wonderful grandchildren, a great uh, daughter and, and her boyfriend are obviously good parents and devoted and it was a wonderful visit. Yeah. Good, good. All right, so Trump has won. The election is over. Trump has won. The best thing to happen. I, I picked this up last night, so the, the thing is wrong. It's Trump ended up with 312. So it, did he actually, or that's the projection? No, that's actually, as the, I saw the before, before I came out on the show, it was 312. It's the same people who put this up. So Trump has got 312. And what is that from? Uh, AP? Yeah. Yeah. This is the AP map from last night. So it looks to me like he's got more than 270, huh? Yeah, he's so got a lot more than 270. A whole bunch over last time because it was when that within a few, right? What was it in the in the previous well, election cycle? I don't remember, but it was yeah. a narrow it's 70 something. It was in the 70s. It was a real close. And he didn't win the popular vote this time. This time he won the popular vote by like five, six million. It wasn't yeah. even close. Yeah. As again, it wasn't even close. He won all the battleground, the real battleground states. Um, it was kind of a sweep. It was a repudiation of the far left Democrat. Mm. Um, you know, it's one of these things I like to point out is half the people who voted against Trump were voting against Trump. They weren't voting for Harris. Mm. Um, a chunk, I'm not exactly sure how, a third of people who are voting for Trump were not voting for Trump. They were voting against Harris, against the Democrats. Mm. So we've got a huge chunk of the country who is not voting for anybody. They're voting against the person who they think is worse. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting there tonight and you're licking your wounds and you've got the, the tears going, look in the mirror and say, I'm the problem. Mm. Well, how about uh, making sure that the powers that we let be actually put up candidates that we want to vote for instead of the behind the doors party stuff like the the... Democrats have done deals. I don't know where they did for Biden. Uh, they probably didn't. We don't know about it. But they did a deal to uh, get Bernie Sanders out of the way for um, Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they did a deal to put um, somebody who's never won an election in her life, um, Kamala Harris, yeah. Kamala Harris uh, in as the president. So you would, wouldn't you think that, that Democratic voters would actually want to say in who their leaders are? Okay, and even in an emergency situation, you, you had the chance to have that as an open convention. Let the oh delegates yeah. decide. Bang, bang. At, yeah, and you could, have, you could have manufactured that and at least given the appearance that the delegates got yeah, to decide. Yeah. They but that. they didn't even do that because yeah. they didn't want to risk the embarrassment of her not winning that. Yeah. I voted for the non, well, no, I didn't. Uh, I'm glad the non-puppet one, because no, nobody <laughs> tells Trump what to do. I don't even know if he knows what he's going to do. Yeah, but, I, yeah. I, I heard him. The one thing Trump actually kind of, this is going to be surprising for people, that um, foreign policy. I'm actually okay with Trump on foreign policy. I don't agree with tariffs, 
But if tariffs are a response to an unfair trade practice, I'm actually okay with that. Mm. You know, if, if you've got open, or open trade between two countries and then you want to impose a tariff on it, I'm, that's stupid, mm. right? But if one country has a lot of barriers mm. or a lot of tariffs and mm. you have none, you're a moron. Or if that country simply, simply subsidizes its internal industries to produce goods at low cost, then no. But I think the problem with tariffs, we could, we could, we could have six shows about tariffs and continue to disagree. They don't work and they lead to wars. Uh, but and people say, well, the threats of terrorists have effect. But I don't know if that's that's true. But the thing about it is, is that that we'll see what Trump does. I'm hoping that that you know he's a BSer. I can't use the word bull <coughs> on the show. I don't think, although I have accidentally before. Uh, and what what leaders say to get elected to get their their uh, the electorate frothing at the mouth and what they actually do are two different things. And I'm hoping he pulls a reverse FDR. Because when FDR was elected, uh, he ran on uh, reducing government, shrinking the government, lowering taxes, and he turned into a socialist dictator, basically. So, you know, Trump is running on, you know, let's deport 10 million illegals and throw up these big tariffs. Who knows what he's actually going to do? Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, if he's certainly not falling for this, oh, we have to. Uh, uh, send you know a trillion dollars overseas to to our friends who are fighting wars with other people uh and you know i'm i'm a big fan of that yeah. so well and uh, you, in terms of di diplomacy you could kind of use the reagan thing right where they send about hey this guy's so crazy we don't know what he's going to do so you mm -hmm. we want to get a deal done now mm -hmm. right before he makes a decision that none of us well, like. Well, there's, there's uh, I asked my my liberal friends i don't know if i can call them friends what liberal acquaintances some of them are friends you know, I would do a favor for them, they'd do a favor for me. That, that's what a friend does. You know, if you're in need, they help you out. I said, do you think that Putin would have uh, invaded the Ukraine if, uh, if Trump was president? And they look a little sheepish and say no. He wouldn't have. Um, and I asked, I asked conservatives, yeah, of course he wouldn't. You know, because, um, you know, and they pull out that, that thing, which could be theater, where um, we were, we were going to pull out of Af Afghanistan only do it much better. And he pulled the head of the Taliban into, the, basically had him in the White House and, and said, you can't kill any more Americans, because if you do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you. And he dropped a picture of the guy's house down on, yeah. on the table. I was so. listening to a Navy SEAL do an interview, and they were talking about that. He says, yeah. oh, and Trump, Trump doesn't, the reason Trump is better on foreign policy is because he's not going to try and go in and do regime change and mm -hmm. take over. And no, he's just going to do punishment, right? If you do something we don't like, he's going to, kill you or the, you know, he's not going to hurt civilians. He's not going to go at, right? There's not going to be any extra thing. There's no yeah. big war. There is just quick um, surgical retaliation. Yeah, assassination. Yeah. 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 There's no messing around. And I'm not saying it's right. I, I <sighs> But it's more effective than this oh, yeah. whimsy, flat-wristed, no, well, and, nothing. And that's why that we have the now. military, the industrial military complex hates them because he thinks that they're, they don't deserve to play with the toys and get, uh, and that lead to the death of a bunch of good American boys. Yeah. Flat out. He doesn't, he, you know, and that's why they despise him, because he doesn't play their game. Yeah. Yeah, they, they love their game. Anyway, so, you want to talk about the M, how NPR viewed it, <laughs> uh, his win? Oh man, NPR? Uh, how did NPR? I didn't watch. I didn't no. go to NPR. Well, <laughs> so NPR just went. His misinformation and the fact he's a convicted felon and people have voted, then he's a liar, voted for him in spite of it, and on and on and on, you know, with their propaganda. Yeah, but yeah. if, if all that is true, then it? any self-reflection we say, okay, wait, what does that say about us? That yeah. these people think we're so crappy that this guy is better. Yeah. That this guy with all these problems, this laundry list of problems, is better than you. And they mm -hmm. don't seem to no, understand they won't. that. And they won't, because it's like... If somebody's moral compass is off, and they've lived 45, 50 years of their life with a bad moral compass, they're never going to wake up in the, in the, in, and look in the mirror and say, I was wrong for 50 years, because basically uh, that, that would lead to clinical depression or suicide. They're not going to do it. They're not going to admit that they've been wrong about things. They're just, they just won't. They just won't. And no. speaking about being wrong for these things, we're going to move on to, but to a, the pollsters 
got it wrong again, huh. which is probably one of the reasons so many people are so upset today. They expected an easy victory, and, and they, they got a crushing a defeat. Maybe not an easy one, yeah, but a victory nonetheless. And yeah. what they got is a crushing defeat. Yeah. Yeah. And so you now... You got it right? <laughs> the betting markets got it right. The, the British bookies, yeah. They had... Uh, some of my conservative friends were, some of my liberal friends were saying it can't possibly happen. I said, I wouldn't get your heart set on, on Kamala winning because uh, the British bookies say uh, Trump has a 63% chance to win. That's pretty heavy money. Um, and it turns out they were right. So why, you know, let's talk about why the pollsters are wrong. You want to you yeah. lead off on that so, or do you want me to do it? Or what? Well, part of the reason why the pollsters are wrong is, you know, Bad, bad data in, bad data out, yep. right? So if you formulate your poll, or your poll wrong, you're mm. never gonna get yeah. an outcome that works. And then you've got some problems is people who are right-leaning are less likely to answer polls. Mm. They're just simply less likely to pick up the phone. Well, they're also less likely to answer their questions honestly because uh, they, they don't wanna get canceled. And they think, I'm not trusting you. You're saying this, this knowledge will, will, won't go out of the room, but I wouldn't be surprised if a week later the FBI is knocking on my door. So, um, yeah, yeah they, they're, they, they are aware that I think people are way smarter, the American people are way smarter than we, uh, that politicians give them credit for. They realize that, that if uh, um, the polls were accurate, that the deep state would find a way to somehow move the needle before the election. But if they go into it, confident that they're going to win or you know even even marginally confident then maybe they're not going to reach into their bag of tricks so uh, you know and that might, might sound like conspiracy theory but <sighs> has not every single conspiracy theory that you and I have talked about on the show for the last 10 years been the truth yeah well they're not conspiracy theories they were theories that ended up being uh, more more true than not, yeah. shall we say. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to say we're completely correct because we weren't, no, but we no, were more we're, true we're than not. we're not right about everything. I didn't, um, I don't want to talk about the assassination, but that's such an open and shut case of, let me close my eyes while somebody shoots the president than I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, it makes the Kennedy assassination look like truth. Yeah, you know? say, that's either gross incompetence or something else. Yeah. Yeah, and so and gross incompetence becomes something else at some point, right? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna move on. You know, the pollsters. We're not we're not surprised. Pollsters got mm, it wrong. No. So, we're, yeah, it's just we're just not surprised. We've mm -hmm. been seeing this for the last ten years where pollsters get things wrong. Um, as as John Stewart said, you don't know a word I can't say. Pollsters don't know a word I can't poop. say on this. Don't know poop. Yeah, they don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So they're gonna stop listening to them. So here, a note to America: stop listening to polls. Mm. They're, they're, they're well, that's why Gallup stopped polling uh, presidential elections. They are the best. You can take their polls to the bank on everything else, and and lots of companies do. They pay them to do research because they have professional pollsters that know what they're doing. They frame great questions. Their statistics are great, and everything else. But uh, when it came to, I don't know, what it was the Obama election, I think, uh, after that was went so contrary to the polls, they said, we're not in that business anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's too complicated. I don't complicated. know if they've changed. They might have changed back, but that poll seen a Gallup everything poll. else, but not. I, um, it's it's yeah. so easy to accidentally cook a poll. You yeah. don't even have to do oh, it deliberately. Yeah, yeah. If you live in a bubble. Well, just if you're making a phone call, just your tone of voice. It's not the words, it's the tone of voice. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so Republicans have won control of the U.S. Senate and they have made gains in the House. We're gonna move on to the next one. The question becomes though is we believe, I think that the House, the Republicans are pretty much gonna control the House. It's, mm -hmm. We're waiting for California, which we're gonna talk about here um, at the end well, of the show. Well that number now is 53, is it not? 53, is it it's between 50, it'll no, be. No, they gained three. Yeah, it'll be 50, well, so far they've gained three. Um, Why doesn't that add up to the right number? There are two for every um, because, state, there's 50 states. Because there's one independent senator, and, and it was 49. It's complicated. There was a senator, yeah, anyway. Yeah, it, but he, the, he's not, a, he retired, and a, um, well, anyway, yeah, I, I, the numbers don't add up. Yeah, yeah it's going to be, f what's going to add up between somewhere between 53 and 55, yeah. they're waiting on some, you know, 
close races mm -hmm. to, to come through. But Republicans have got control of the Senate. They are going to get control of the, the House. I think they're at 212 now, 213. Again, mm -hmm. you're waiting for California to finish yeah. counting yeah. their and, freedom and ballots. And every single race that's close, that um, I think there's about 10 California races that are pretty close and are all leaning toward Republicans. Yeah, so. there was a again the big shift. We talked about it uh, next week. <laughs> that there was a that there was we a have a time machine. We know what happens in the future, folks. Yeah, <laughs> there, there's a big shift in, in, in even in California. You know, right? Why Democrats still won? Their margins shrunk a lot, hmm. and so well, New Jersey almost went. It was New Jersey Biden won by 19 or 20 points last time, 2020 was it? And uh, the Democrats only won by 5% this time. Yeah, and, and it's, the, the shift is happening. That's New Jersey. People are rejecting, I think they're not rejecting the Democrats, they're rejecting the far left. Yeah. I, I think the rank and file, the anti-establishment, believes in free speech, believes in genuine tolerance, Democrat, is still a powerful Democrat. It's the far left that takes tolerance to intolerance, mm -hmm. that, you know, is. Well, radicals, like cream rises to the top. In this case, it's just the opposite of cream. Mold, I think. Radicals <laughs> take over every um, political organization. Yeah. Because they're the most passionate and the most ruthless. Yeah, and they're the ones who have the, yeah, they have the energy to do, yeah. do these things. While the average person, I just, you know, we just want to go eat lunch. We don't want to sit there and f fight and argue and the average people don't want to do it. Yeah. So. I think Democrats are going to rue the day that they got rid of all those uh, filibuster protections that mm. op oppositions have. Mm. You know, they were so interested in, in getting their agenda passed. They, 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 for some reason, thought that uh, what happened today will happen tomorrow. Yes. It's not the case. Yeah. You, will, you will always be in a minority at some point in your life. Yeah. Yeah, you need they, the protections. They thought that they, by, by forcing those through, they would create a, a forever... Um, Majority. Mm -hmm. if, if we pass our policies, we'll create a for, forever majority. So we'll force them mm -hmm. through, and it didn't work because their their policies are failures. Mm -hmm. It just is. Now this is the one that I'm s most sad about. The Libertarian Party has been underperforming in this presidential election. Um, Chase is actually a good guy. I met him, had, had a conversation with yeah, him. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's uh, a libertarian. He's yeah. a true libertarian. He's a true libertarian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't met him, but I, I, from what I've read and what I've seen, he's a true libertarian. Yeah. We, there's policy disagreements, but the, the nice thing about libertarian policy disagreements is they become irrelevant because we don't believe in having enough power for those policy disagreements to matter. Mm. <laughs> right? We can disagree on policy, but because we don't believe in government power to enforce those, it's irrelevant. Yeah. And so he got less than 1%. He, got, he did way worse than, than the really nice lady last yes, time. Judge Orton. And, and like, what, a third of what Johnson got yeah. in and the 16 cycle? His policy it wasn't any different no. fundamentally than Joe Jorgensen. No. But what happened was the party abandoned him. Mm. The Mises Caucus wing of the party has decided, for whatever reason, that electing Trump was more important, or not electing Democrats. Let's be actually clear what mm. they're actually, the, the, Paul, the thing was. Not electing Democrats was more important than pushing the libertarian message. Mm. And, you know, I've long complained that one of the problems we have, and Chase had this problem too, is that we use others' language, the language mm. of the left, the language of the mm. right. We try to latch on to the tel yep. coattails and, and grab a few things, and that is just fundamentally wrong. Yep. And we'll never get past 2 3%. If we do that, we have to talk our own message, talk our own game, yep. play our own game. Let them play checkers, let them play chess. We, got, we go off and play Magic the Gathering, right? Whatever it is, we yeah. Yeah, play our own game. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's no surprise to me that with the state of the Libertarian Party now, the National Libertarian Party, that we underperformed mm -hmm. because we essentially guaranteed it. Well, the, um, yeah, they didn't even promote them, so especially the California wing of it didn't, didn't promote yeah. them. Yeah. There were a few social issues that they disagreed with them on, and yeah. because of that, Rather than accepting, hey, I agree with them 85%, we're mm. gonna we're gonna support them. Mm. Well, I agree with them 90%, but I'm not gonna support them because of these two issues. And mm. individually, as an as an individual person, I can respect that. Mm. But as a uh, as a representative of the whole movement, as mm. someone who's a leader in the party, you're not doing your job mm. by that because there are people who support them, and yeah. you you have to represent them too. 
I agree. So, so. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got two minutes left, John. So, um, Mayor. So, do we really care? I, mean, I, I, don't, I didn't vote in the mayor. I left it blank um, because one of the other. But it looks like Kevin McCarty, if, you are, what, if, if you're happy, uh, this is one of these things. If you, put a gun, if you put the real gun to my head and made me choose, I would have chosen Kevin McCarty over Flo. Be mm -hmm. simply because she's a far left progressive. Yep. Kevin McCarty is, he's a, Demo he's a Democrat political hack, union owned and paid, but at least he's predictable. Mm -hmm. And you, you know? <laughs> uh, Flo is not. <laughs> she's yeah. not. She's yeah. a very nice lady. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Oh, yeah. In terms of a human person who would actually want yeah. to sit down and have a, a friend type relationship, she's great. She would be the person I would choose. I, <laughs> you know, not a political hack, but yeah. you're running a city. You have that, that needs a representative that, with a representative mindset, and yeah. she doesn't I would, have that. I would just, uh, God, I wish unions and, and unions didn't run the state of California. All right, we got God a minute left, John, so I want to cover this last, this, this thing. The California embarrassment, is it going to take forever for California to count all these vote by mail ballots? Hmm. And it's the slowest, most expensive way to vote, and it's a, actually, it creates a national disgrace. And if the race had been close, it would also be creating a national trauma. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of these fundamental things we need to get back to. I don't want to take anybody who needs to vote by mail to vote by mail, right? If you're old and elderly and firm or on vacation, vote by mail. But mm -hmm. for the rest of us, we can go up and show up and vote on, on election day or so what's, the what, week before. Yeah. What's at, weird at is place. California insists upon, they say, insists upon getting it right and make sure that uh, if the signature doesn't match, they contact the person and they have like six days or something to respond. And if they don't respond, I guess they throw the vote out. But in other states, uh, I don't know what's right or wrong, they say, okay, here's the ballot. We're not gonna do any of that stuff. We're just gonna accept it. I think, I agree with you, 83% uh, of the people in the United States of America want people to identify themselves with some form of official identity card when they vote. And I agree with that. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. it. Claiming that it's racism is stupid. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, John, for being here. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, team, inside for working. But most importantly, thank you for watching. Have a good night. And please remember to love everybody. Yep. Love them.